Welcome back to my channel, Greg Allen F1. We're in Bahrain for a second week, and what a crazy race this was. A reminder that Formula One can sometimes show you the highs and the lows all in one Grand Prix, and if you're a Mercedes fan or a George Russell fan, this was a heartbreaker. But if you're a Checo and Racing Point fan, this was a absolute dream scenario for you today. So let's get right into it. Lap one, Russell makes an impressive move to get by Valtteri Bottas, take the lead, which would set up the majority of this race with Russell out front and looking extremely impressive. By turn four, though, we have another crazy first lap at Bahrain. Sergio Perez gets hit by Charles Leclerc. Leclerc spins out. Verstappen tries to go around the outside. Can't control his car. Winds up right in the barrier. Takes out Leclerc and Verstappen right off the bat. And two of the top drivers that might have had a chance at having a great result for Ferrari and possibly a win for Max Verstappen. And instead, they're out on lap one. Sergio Perez makes it to the pits and has to go all the way to the back of the field. And that would start one of the greatest comebacks maybe we've ever seen in Formula One. Lap seven, great mid-pack battles start breaking out here between P10 and P20. Uh, Williams, Haas, and Alfa Romeo had a, a fantastic race in the back here during this section of the, uh, of the, the Grand Prix today. Really great racing going on there. Um, unfortunately, the back of the pack would play a pretty large role in the outcome of this race towards the end, but we'll get to that. Lap 15, Alex Albon, who's now the only Red Bull left in this, is still struggling to work his way up into the points. And comes on his radio and says there's just no speed on the straights. Um, very interesting. Uh, it has to be said, Alex Albon not qualifying better than he did yesterday really costs Red Bull here and him a, a great opportunity to, to be up there battling for a podium and possibly a win with Verstappen going out early. He does recover and wind up finishing uh, in the middle of the, the top 10s there for points. I think he finished P6. The race just ended as I'm filming this, so I'm not 100% sure what the official result was and where he finished. I think it was P6, but that was a missed opportunity. If he qualifies better and he's up there, uh, assuming he avoids that first lap crash, Alex Albon kind of missed a chance to maybe win or finish second in this race by his Saturday performance. And when you consider who won this race, that's going to be talked about a lot. Lap 20, Sergio Perez moves up past Albon and Norris as he starts to make his way through the field, which would be the story uh, that would wind up leading this day as a day where you would say there are many drivers that look like they could be the driver of the day. Um, up until the last few laps, I wouldn't have said Checo. I would have said George Russell, but Checo really comes through in the end as we'll get to. Lap 28, pit stops start beginning and, and pit stops would be a huge story in this race. It would definitely be a, a massive game changer for some teams for the good, for other teams for the bad. Um, Perez actually coming up on lap one and going on to the hard set of tires plays a large role in him being able to work up through that field because it put him on a little bit different pitch strategy than everyone else. Lap 44, Esteban Ocon, I have been talking about that in my power rankings, that I feel that Ocon has been a lot better than people give him credit for and that he's been slowly moving in the right direction where I know he's been kind of outshined by Daniel Ricciardo at Renault, but I felt like he's been getting better and better every week. Today was a breakout day for him. He makes a fantastic move to outduel Lance Stroll coming out of pits and coming out of the boxing. And, and that would wind up playing to be very large in the end of this race. That lap 44 pass that Alcon had on Stroll takes advantage of Stroll not having enough heat in his tires coming out of the pit lane. And a, just a fantastic move from him. And that really winds up putting him on a different step of the podium at the end of this race. Lap 46, George Russell finally comes in and pits. Mercedes extended their, their pit window after an early virtual safety car. And... He has some issues with the power uh, settings on his car coming out. I think it was just inexperience in that car. Gets it together and winds up with an even bigger lead at the end. So a good pit stop. Everything is going Russell's way. He looks like he's going to lose Hamilton this and cruise to a pretty easy victory at this point in the race. However, lap 55, Nicholas Latifi brings out a virtual safety car. And a lot of drivers always try to jump into the pits uh, during that VS or VSC to be able to, to improve their position and not lose any spots. Carlos Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo, though, waited a little bit too late to come in. They come in the pit lane, and the green flag comes back out, and it crushes them in their position at that point. They would be able to actually recover from that later on. I'll talk about that in a second. But that seemed like a pretty big moment for both those drivers that were running fourth, fifth, and sixth pretty much all day long. Uh, and actually third for Sainz. He was in the, in the top three for a lot, large part of this race. Lap 62 is where everything unravels or comes together, depending on which team you're rooting for here. So the driver who replaces George Russell, Aiken, 
winds up spinning out, crashing, tears off his front wing, and that brings out a full safety car. Valtteri Bottas and George Russell try to double stack pit for Mercedes and take advantage of the safety car there. Massive confusion like I've never seen from the Mercedes team when they come in there. Russell comes in and gets the wrong set of tires put on. They realize it during Valtteri Bottas' stop right after. Bottas has an extremely long pit stop where they try to figure it out. He winds up with old tires back on his car, and George Russell winds up having to come back in for a second pit stop, and this pretty much ruins Mercedes' race. Bottas doesn't have the tires to compete at this point, and George Russell having to pit push him, pushes him all the way back to fifth place. Green flag comes back out, though, and George Russell is a man on a mission. He gets by Botas, and from lap 70 to 73, he marches up to second with Checo set in his sights to try and win this race. But Formula One can be cruel sometimes, and it was extremely cruel to both Botas and Russell today. Botas has had bad luck all year long. George Russell, on the other hand, had a dream opportunity. It's lap 79, he gets a puncture and has to come in for another pit stop. This drops him out of the points. So for a moment there, it looked like after everything that's happened for George Russell and his ride in Mercedes, that he wasn't even going to finish in the points. They calm him down on the radio. He puts his head down and he does race his way back into the points. And assuming no penalties come because they are looking about him maybe pitting and being on the wrong set of tires as I make this video. Assuming that he doesn't get a penalty here, George Russell does finally get his first championship points in Formula One. But boy, what a missed opportunity this could have been. If they just leave Mercedes out in the hard tires, there's no doubt in my mind that they finish probably 1-2 in this race with a George Russell win. Uh, I'm, I know that they're trying to, to keep their pace up of the cars behind them after a virtual safety car and just cover their bases. But it, when you look back on this, I, I don't think that anyone was passing the two Mercedes if they stay out there. Massive mistake like you just never see Mercedes do, a team that's so flawless. And, and sometimes you wonder, is Lewis Hamilton the calming factor there? Um, or would this have happened if Hamilton was in this race? I don't know. But regardless, George Russell goes from being the man to beat and probably winning this race to having to settle for, for a his first points being his success. And, and it is success for him, but man, what a missed opportunity. However, where one person has extremely bad luck, another team and another person, their fortunes completely change in the matter of a week. Checo, Alcon, and Stroll inherit first, second, and third. Esteban Alcon in his, his first time being in the top three since he's returned to Renault. Lance Stroll has finished on the podium a few times, but Checo, a guy who just one week ago could have podium, had his engine go, doesn't have a ride for next year that we know of. And Sergio Perez wins his first ever Grand Prix, the longest driver that's ever had to, or the longest the driver's ever had to wait to get his first win that did actually win. And he is making an extremely strong case for that second Red Bull seat at this point. From last place on the first lap to first place in this race. Sergio Perez becomes the first Mexican to win since I think around 1970. And if he's not in Formula 1 next year, it's an absolute crime. I've said that in several videos at this point. Alex Albon's performances, it has to be said... I personally feel at this point that Albon should go to AlphaTauri, be Pierre Gasly's teammate next year, and Checo should be in that Red Bull next year. I hope that's what happens. That's not a knock against Alex Albon. It's just Sergio Perez deserves to be in Formula 1, and you put him in a Red Bull, and I think that this is not Sergio Perez's last win. Awesome moment for him. Esteban Ocon gets his first podium, so a good year for French drivers in general, with Pierre Gasly getting his first win, and great for Renault now that Renault has had both of their drivers podium, and that team looks really good with Fernando Alonso uh, at the track watching this in person. He's got to be very happy with the way that team is moving. And Lance Stroll completes a two-podium spot for a racing point just one week after Checo has an engine failure costing him a podium, and Lance Stroll gets turned and flipped over. Both their cars finish on the podium this week. So instead of Mercedes having both cars on, pink Mercedes does, and racing point has a dream scenario day. George Russell, like I said, does finish in the points, and Carlos Sainz and Daniel Ricciardo do recover to have a decent day. Uh, Carlos Sainz has been fantastic the last couple days, and for him to be able to come back and recover from a, a huge virtual safety car and safety car mistake that they have there, uh, it's fantastic stuff for him. The McLarens looked really good all day, and it looked like they were going to be uh, capitalizing on it, but they had some, some bad calls there that put them behind. Carlos does a great job of getting that car back up there. So does Daniel Ricciardo. Fantastic day if you're Renault. And Racing Point, that midfield battle for the Constructors, that third place in the Constructors, and about $10 million on the line there, 
going to be really interesting to see what happens in Abu Dhabi. Either way, what could have been, I, I think for a lot of this race, we knew we were going to have a first time winner. Uh, I just don't think any of us thought it was going to be Checo. We thought it was going to be George Russell. Don't know what to say about next week. Uh, hopefully Lewis Hamilton's back. You, you want to have the drivers like Lewis Hamilton and Roman Grosjean in the cars they're supposed to be in. But if you're a George Russell fan, there's a part of you that's kind of hoping he gets one more shot in that Mercedes this year because the bad luck that was totally out of his hands there with uh, a huge pit and boxing mistake by Mercedes, he rebounds from it, puts himself in a chance to still win that race, and then a puncture happens. Um, just terrible luck for both him and Valtteri Bottas, and you just really want to see Russell get another chance at it because you think if he does, I, I think he's got a great chance of winning in that car. We'll probably see him in a Mercedes in a year or two anyway, but regardless, just not the day that he was hoping to have and just a complete disaster for Mercedes, but for Racing Point, they're able to capitalize. Anyway, fantastic race. Uh, one more to go. I can't believe that the season's almost over. As always, thank you so much for watching. If you come across my video, please consider giving me a like and a subscri subscribe. I put out two to three videos a week about Formula One. Catch you in the next video.